Good day students. In this session, we will be discussing more on transmission impairments. We will be trying to see the types and their definitions and how to mitigate them. As we know, the physical path between transmitter and receiver is called the transmission medium. It's also called the channel. Signals travel through transmission media which are not perfect. The imperfection causes signal impairment. This means that the signal at the beginning of the medium is not the same as the signal at the end of the medium. Impairments exist in all forms of data transmission. Analog signal impairments result in random modifications that impair signal quality. Digital signal impairments result in bit errors. There are three major causes of impairment in a guided transmission media. They are attenuation, distortion and noise. The channel capacity is a very important consideration in data communications. That is how fast we can send data in bits per second over a channel. Design factors affecting channel capacity are data rate, bandwidth, noise and error rate. Now data rate is defined as the amount of data transmitted during a specific time period over a network. Bandwidth is defined as the potential of the data that is to be transferred in a specific period of time. For example, if bandwidth is 100 megabits per second but data rate is 50 megabits per second, it means maximum of 100 megabit data can be transferred over channel and it's transmitting only 50 megabits data per second. Attenuation is the loss of signal strength in networking cables or connections. An amplifier is an electronic device that increases the voltage, current or power of a signal. To show the loss or gain of energy, the unit decibel is used. Now the decibel measures the relative strength of two signals or one signal at two different points. The decibel is positive if signal is strengthened and it, it is negative when signal attenuates. In transmitting signals, attenuation is the loss of signal strength as measured in decibels. For instance, signals transmitted from a cell tower to your phone can become distorted from increased attenuation as you walk around the corner of a building. Wireless signal strength can be attenuated due to noise, physical barriers and long distances. As signal attenuation increases, full signal transmission decreases. Attenuation rates in cabling are affected by external sources of noise at frequencies that penetrate the signal carried by the cable. Now let us consider an example and let's see how loss of power is calculated. Uh, the scenario goes like this. Suppose a signal travels through a transmission media and its power is reduced to one and a half. This means that P2 is half half P1. In this case, the attenuation or loss of power can be calculated as just a point. Remember, we have to use a log calculator which is available online. So I would suggest you to use this link uh, to calculate log values. The formula, the expression to calculate the reduction uh, is 10 log P2 over P1 to the base 10. So in this case, P2 is 0.5 P1. So when we substitute the value, it becomes 10 log 0.5 P1 over P1 to the base 10, which is equal to 10 log 0.5 to the base 10, which is equal to 10 times minus 0.3, which is negative 3 decibels. So if you want to calculate the log value of 0.5 to the base 10, I would suggest you to use the rapidtables.com uh, which gives a log calculation. The calculation of the log value is straightforward. So since it's a base 10, you will have to use the first drop down to change the value to 10 and then enter the value 
of the number that has to be converted to the equivalent log value so in this case it's 0 0.5 so enter 0 0.5 and just press equal to or calculate and that's it you will get the value of the base 10 logarithm of 0 0.5 which is minus 0 0.3010299566 and so on and you can round it off and you can just say the answer as negative 0.3 decibels in the previous example we saw a scenario where there was loss of power in this case we are going to demonstrate how to calculate amplification that's gain of power there is no difference in terms of the formula because we have to compare it with p1 and p2 and we have to relate and find an expression that relates both p1 and p2 for example, let's consider this scenario. A signal travels through an amplifier and its power is increased 10 times. This means that P2 equals 10 times of P1. So in this case, the amplification, it's also called as the gain of power, can be calculated. And the formula for calculating is shown. It is shown here. So you will see 10 log P2 over P1 to the base 10 which is 10 times log 10 p1 over p1 to the base 10 where p1 gets cancelled so we have to find the value of log of 10 to the base 10 log of any number to the same base is equal to 1 so in this case it's 10 times 1 which is 10 decibels so you will see there is no negative number which means that it clearly says that there is a gain of power one reason that engineers use the decibel to measure the changes in the strength of a signal is because that decimal numbers can be added or subtracted when we are measuring several points instead of just two in the figure shown a signal travels from point 1 to point 4 in this case the decibel value can actually be cascaded and calculated in this case, the decibel value is calculated as minus 3 plus 7 minus 3 equals plus 1. Let us see another scenario or example where the decibel is measured in milliwatts. So like I said, sometimes the decibel is used to measure signal power in milliwatts. In this case, it is referred to as dB. M and is calculated as dBm equals 10 log Pm to the base 10, where Pm denotes the power in milliwatts. Now let's uh, calculate the power of a signal with dBm equals negative 30. Please note the highlighted expression that is when b raised to the power y equals x then the base b logarithm of a number x is log x to the base b equals y which it could also be written as b raised to the power y equals x. So we are going to use this uh, when we calculate 10 log pm to the base 10 equals negative 30. So when you do the cancellation it will will get will be getting the value. 10 raised to the power 3 milliwatts. Let us uh, discuss another example. In this case, the loss in a cable is usually defined in decibels per kilometer. If the signal at the beginning of a cable with negative 0.3 decibels per kilometer has a power of 2 milliwatts, what is the power of the signal at 5 kilometer? If you see the steps, since we know the loss in the cable is negative 1.5 decibels and the distance is uh, given in 5 kilometers, so the calculation is uh, P2 over P1 equals 10 raised to the power minus 0 0.15 equals to 0 0.71. So finally, after all the cancellations and divisions, we get a value of 1.4 milliwatts. 
Distortion means that the signal changes its form or shape. Distortion can occur in a composite signal made of different frequencies. Each signal component has its own propagation speed through a medium and therefore its own delay in arriving at the final destination. Differences in delay may create a difference in phase if the delay is not exactly the same as the period duration. Noise is another cause of impairment. Thermal noise is the random motion of electrons in a wire which creates an extra signal not originally sent by the transmitter. Then we have crosstalk where one wire acts as a sending antenna and the other as a receiving antenna. And there is spike, a signal with high energy in a very short time. It is important for us to consider the average signal power and the average noise power because these may change with time. Signal to noise ratio is actually the ratio of what is wanted, that is the signal, to what is not wanted, that's the noise. A high SNR means the signal is less corrupted by noise and a low SNR means the signal is more corrupted by noise. It is the ratio between two powers or power signals. This image shown here clearly differentiates the large SNR and the small signal to noise ratio. So in the first case, you will clearly see that there is a large signal to noise ratio. And in the second case, there is a small signal to noise ratio. Now let us consider an example where we are going to find the values of signal to noise ratio. There are two formats. One is SNR, the other one is SNR suffix dB. The signal to noise ratio is often given in decimals and SNR dB equals 10 log to the value of SNR to the base 10 and SNR dB equals 10 log signal to noise ratio to the base 10. So for the given scenario where the power of a signal is 10 milliwatts and the power of the noise is 1 microwatts, the values of SNR and SNR dB is calculated as follows. So the signal to noise ratio, like I said, is often given in decibels. And the formula that we're going to use is 10 log SNR to the base 10. So in this case, we also know that a 10 milliwatt or 1 microwatt. So the formula you will be able to see the calculations after cancelling out and doing the division we get a value of 40. So when we apply this arithmetic it is interesting to note that the values of SNR or SNR suffix dB for a noiseless channel it will be infinite. We will not be able to define it. So in this case uh, you know it's very difficult in real life it is in the ideal case please note some of the effects or causes of transmission uh, impairments in unguided wireless media the first one is the free space loss so it happens because the signals disperse with the distance the second one is the atmospheric absorption where water vapor and oxygen contribute to signal loss multipath where the obstacles reflect signal creating multiple copies refraction the change in signal speed due to atmospheric conditions and finally the thermal noise which is a white noise arising from thermal activity of devices thank you for listening to this session uh, we will meet in the next session